Hi everyone, I'd like to welcome you to the Austrian Circle. This is the program where we talk about the economics of freedom, here on WHUS Stores 91.7 FM. So thank you very much for tuning into my show this morning. I have a very special guest on the show today. Uh, Carla Garrick is the president of the Free State Project, and I wanted to welcome her to the show. Welcome, Carla. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Great. So I wanted to have you on to talk a little bit about the Free State Project. Uh, this is happening up in New Hampshire. I know that your guys' motto is liberty in our lifetime. And uh, what, what does that mean to you, and, and what is your uh, goal as an organization up in New Hampshire? Sure. So the Free State Project has been around for just over a decade, and the goal is to try and concentrate 20,000 liberty activists in the state of New Hampshire. New Hampshire sort of has a live and let live, live free or die kind of cultural feel to it, and uh, the state was chosen, and we have about 16,000 100 people who've signed up for the project. Once we reach the 20,000, then the participants have five years to move to the state of New Hampshire. But in typical libertarian style, a bunch of us decided we weren't going to wait and uh, have just been moving out to New Hampshire. There was a big sort of flood of about 1,000 people in 2008, and uh, now people, you know, are just constantly coming in. So we have over 10 percent, uh, about 1,600 movers who have made it out here to the beautiful state of New Hampshire, which has no sales tax and no personal income tax, and actually rates really high in terms of quality of living. There was a report that came out this week that actually said it's the best place to live. So it's kind of a best kept little secret, and we're here and we're trying to sort of accomplish liberty in our lifetimes. So, you know, something tangible and real and really sort of change our futures. So uh, New Hampshire was chosen uh, because of these reasons, because of the, the low sales tax and because of the already existing kind of personal freedoms that were existent in New Hampshire, as opposed to some of the other, I know Massachusetts and uh, we're here down in Connecticut is uh, uh, quite oppressive uh, in terms of laws that we have. So is New Hampshire chosen because of those reasons? Yeah, so actually what happened was um, there was a graduate student, Jason Sorens, who wrote a paper um, while he was still in grad school, and he had been frustrated by libertarian politics and sort of had the sense of, you know, there are a lot of people who, who are libertarian-leaning or freedom-loving, you know, and that if instead of us being spread all across the country, if we concentrated in, in one place, we could actually make a difference. So he wrote that paper, and people just really went gaga about the idea. They were like, wow, this is a really great idea. So they picked 10 states. You know, um, Wyoming was on there, the Dakotas. It would be all the usual suspects, you know, where you look, and it's probably a red state, someone with uh, favorable taxes. Um, Alaska was on the list. And then in the northeast, uh, the one place was New Hampshire. And so... People at that time, so this is back in 2001, 2002, took a vote, and uh, New Hampshire won. And the governor at the time, Governor Benson, you know, he was like, hey, we can't wait to have you guys. Please come. We need the reinforcements. Um, so, so, you know, they picked New Hampshire, and, and here we are. Great. And so what does, uh, what does kind of liberty mean to you, Carla? This is a question I like to ask uh, some of the guests on the show. Kind of what, what is libertarianism? What is liberty? What, what is, um, I mean, generally we want to reduce state power, which can give people a little bit of concern or anxiety. So I like to explain exactly what it is that we mean by trying to bring liberty to the world. Yeah, so, you know, for me personally, it, it means as little interference with the state as possible. Um, I sort of fall on the spectrum that I think, you know, free markets can really provide most of the services that are, is provided by the monopoly state uh, in a fairer and better way, i.e. you pay for the services you use, and there's a direct, you know, financial incentive for the party to give you the services you're paying for, unlike the state, you know, who kind of comes, holds their hand out, and uh, uses, you know, my taxes to go bomb people. I, I don't approve of that. You know, I'd prefer not to have to have my hard-earned <laughs> money be spent on things that, you know, I, I, I abhor, that I, I find despicable. And um, so liberty is really, 
I think it's 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 twofold. I think it's a, it's a mindset. You know, you I I've done a lot of reading. I would say within the spectrum, I probably fall out on a, a voluntarist or a sort of uh, ANCAP, anarcho-capitalist side of things. Um, but you know, it, it was a process to get there, and I think for a lot of people. It's it's scary when people say, well, you know, we want more liberty because we, we've sort of been trained to think, well, you know, this, the state needs to take care of us or the state needs to, you know, help those less fortunate. And when you really think about it, the state is just made up of people. You know, it's sort of Bastia from the law. Um, I'm, I'm stating it more crassly. He obviously stated this very eloquently. But, you know, um, the government is made up of people. You know, people are bad, therefore we need the government, which is made up of people, but people are bad. So sort of that idea of, you know, what is government really? So, you know, liberty in my lifetime, I'm, I'm hoping we can um, – do things on a scale from decriminalizing private behavior. Here in New Hampshire, there were some Free State Project participants who have declared um, there was a law in New Hampshire that made adultery illegal. So, you know, they, they stopped that. So that was kind of, you know, a silly little example. But, um, yeah, I'd just like to see much more market forces come into play. And then one thing I think when people hear these ideas, you know, I have friends who are teachers, and they're like, well, you know, if we didn't have state education and we didn't have schools, you know, I wouldn't have a job. And I'm like, no, you'd have a much better job. You know, you could probably tutor six kids, less hours, a lot less red tape. So I think part of our our uh, responsibility, really, when we uh, communicate these ideas, is to help people to understand. You know, we're not saying every, you know, you there's there's no value to what they're doing. It's just let's let's put it within the market. Let's really you know value it at what it should be. You know, should a teacher, you know, get you know. 30, 40 years of pension, you know, if, if people in the private market aren't getting that. So, so really just equalize things through the market. Right, and I, I think that's uh, people's reaction generally. They, they have this belief that once the government stops providing a particular good or service, that that good or service is going to disappear entirely, you know, not looking back in time to see that the market has actually generally provided that good before the government started providing it. And um, so uh, how, how are people's anxiety up in New Hampshire, and how, how is their reaction to you guys trying to reduce the state and limit the state's behavior in different areas of, of uh, New Hampshire life? I think, you know, it's, it's favorable. You know, New Hampshire was chosen because, and this is really uh, true here, that most people, you know, this is an independent state and, and in terms of, you know, how people declare politically, and um, people really are fairly libertarian here. They may not know it, they may never have even heard that term, but that's just philosophically really where they are. They're kind of, you know, rugged individualists who just take care of stuff themselves for the most part and think most politicians are crooks. And um, so the response has actually been very favorable for the most part, I would say, with locals and, you know, just the man on the street. Now, in terms of with the establishment, I would say um, they are starting to take note that there is a lot of uh, libertarian, freedom-leaning people moving to the state. Um, and certainly for the Free State Project participants who are engaged in the political process, um, and that's something that's entirely separate to the Free State Project itself. We, we just try and recruit people to move here. Um, the establishment is definitely starting to notice. I've seen mailers, you know, the, uh, the term people are being associated with the Free State Project, sometimes when they actually have nothing to do with it. So, you know, on the compendium of, of the Gandhi quotes, I would say from the establishment's point of view, there's definitely, they're starting to fight us, you know. But if, 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 it, if all goes according to that plan, you know, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then we win. So <laughs> maybe we're in pretty good shape. Well, great. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that because my concern always with democracy is that the minority is going to be overpowered by the majority. And, um, you know, everybody loves democracy when it works for them, when, when their interests are being met and when, uh, you know, the state is doing things that they would like it to do. But the minority is the people that we really have to look out for. Um, you know, there's examples of this all throughout history when uh, uh, Hitler was 
in power is a very extreme example, but the Jews were the minority back then. Uh, the Jim Crow laws targeted the minority of the blacks, um, and uh, more recently the homosexuals. You know, they uh, were targeted by laws, and now they, unfortunately, are using discrimination laws to target uh, minority groups who are, you know, against uh, particular things that they don't like. And and so my concern always with bringing these ideas to people is that uh, I don't want to, them to think that I'm trying to override their preferences by getting uh, my style of government in, in the way that they uh, would would not like it, you know. And so I'm very glad to hear that, that people up there are more accepting of these ideas. Yeah, and you know, um, you know the saying that you know democracy is two wolves and a sheep deciding on what's for dinner, right? And we we saw it just in in uh, history with the, the Scottish independence vote earlier this month, where you know there were forty two million people who said no, we don't want independence, and forty one million who said we do want independence. And to me, it's just an absurd sort of an almost illogical situation to be like, okay, so so the 42 million get to tell the 41 million, you know, that that's a pretty big dichotomy in terms of, hey, we want independence and we don't want independence. And to, do, you know, force your will on someone just because, you know, there was one more person who thought the way you think or they think. And um, so democracy, you know, it, it it is kind of a canard. I I. I feel like there should be better systems. I think with uh, technology the way it is now, you know, there should be ways we could do online voting. There should be ways that, you know, you could allocate your taxes and say, you know, I'm not willing to spend money on war. I'm not willing to spend money on, you know, defense contractors. I'm not willing to spend money on X, Y, and Z if you have to tax me, you know, and, and I personally think taxation is slavery. Um, you know, so if you take 40% of my my income, you know, at what level is it not slavery? You know, should it be if you take 100% or if Forty percent or ten percent. So I, you know, I think that we should be evolving and we should really be looking at solutions um, to the state, uh, both alternate solutions and then even just if we have to have this kind of system, let's make it more efficient. Let's make it more, you know, direct democracy. Let's let's allow people to to choose what what they want and how they want to be. Uh, enslaved, I guess. Sorry, that might be a little melodramatic for the morning, but uh, that's how I feel. No, I, I'm, I'm completely in accordance. But you know, Carla, that blows the whole scam out of the water. Uh, you know, if people get to be able to actually choose where their money goes, I mean, that's that's a market system. That's not a governmental system. Uh, government just wants to give you the illusion that you get the choice and not the actual choice itself, because of course, people aren't going to pay for all these extravagant things that the state does if it's not in this kind of bulk package that you have to pay for or else. And, um, you know, people might not even pay for it at all if there wasn't that or else uh, at right. the end of it. Of course, yeah. No, that's true. Uh, you did say something where one of the things I love here in New Hampshire, you know how people will bring up the what about the roads argument, right? Um, which typically will come into play in something like this conversation. And it's great up here, the uh, earliest turnpikes, the earliest roads that were built here, and you can still see the little historic signs next to the highways, um, were all built privately. And so I love it when, you know, you have a debate with someone in, in, in the States, and they're like, but, you know, if you didn't pay your tax, is who would build the roads, or how can you say you want to opt out of the system if you still use our roads? And I'm like, look, you know, here's a historical um, point and, and example to point to to say that, you know, you don't actually need the state to build the, and manage and maintain the roads. You know, it's still people doing it. So, you know, we, we can do it without this sort of idea of, you know, a club and the threat of violence, and if, you know, you don't play the game, you eventually end up in in jail. So ultimately it becomes an issue of just educating people and really talking through the issues. I think from, from a libertarian standpoint, there's a lot more interest in these ideas than even 10 years ago. And, you know, it's it's not going to be easy, but I think we're moving in the right direction. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. And and people are more accepting, at least I've noticed in, in my own life. Uh, people seem to be a little bit more curious, a little bit more interested. And uh, like you said, I mean, there there are all these services that used to be provided privately. And I know in the case of the roads, um, the government was not actually upholding private property rights. It wasn't, uh, you know, people would just drive through the roads and they wouldn't actually be paying the, the road operator. And the road operator would go to the government and say, hey, this guy didn't pay. And the government didn't uphold property rights. It didn't actually go in and enforce it. And so the companies went out of business and government took over from there. So ultimately, it was really the the government really that made it uh, fail in the first place. And so, you know, New England has this wonderful history behind it. And you mentioned uh, the Scottish independent vote just a little while ago. And New England actually has a history of secessionist movements. Um, They got together, I believe, three times in the 1800s trying to figure out whether or not they wanted to continue on to stay with the Union uh, or not. And secession uh, historically here has been kind of a dirty word since the uh, Civil War. But I think that it's a, a viable idea for independence. The American Revolution was uh, ultimately a secessionist movement from Britain uh, when we didn't feel that the political organization was serving us anymore. What are uh, your thoughts on secession, and uh, has there been any kind of movement or interest in that in New Hampshire? Um, Yeah, there certainly is. Um, There are participants who have moved out, who have actually formed sort of nonprofits and independence movements and, and... really actively looking at that kind of stuff. Um, New Hampshire is a uh, federal donor state, so that means, you know, we pay in more taxes than we get out. And so from an economic standpoint, I think, you know, as you said, it really does start to make sense for some states to be like, does this, you know, should we even be in this union anymore? Up in this area in Vermont, of course, has a very strong secessionist movement. Even in Quebec and Canada, there's a strong secessionist movement. We haven't seen, you know, I haven't seen here on the ground really something, you know, that would rise to those levels yet. I think it's the discussion that's just really starting to happen. Um, People who who move for the Free State Project, it it is a spectrum. There are a lot of people who work, you know, through, um, through the political process, and then there are other people who, you know, would look at an option like secession, um, as a solution to the problem. I personally think, you know, it's definitely an idea to explore. Um, And, you know, the scary part, as you said, is, you know, it it had become this kind of dirty word, and it's not really something people are supposed to mention or talk about. But but I think, you know, it's another one of those things where we just, it has to become part of the dialogue because, I have jokingly say, well, I want to encourage Vermont to secede first so we can see what they do to them, right? <laughs> so that it's, uh, you know, because I, I think it could end up being a dangerous game or, you know, it could just really be a solution where there could be a devolution of this, you know, this sort of monolithic giant federal government that we have now. So time will tell, but I, I definitely think it should be, a tool and a discussion that should at least be talked about. Yeah, I definitely think so as well. So I'm chatting with Carla Garrick, who is the president of the Free State Project up in New Hampshire. They are trying to bring about liberty in our lifetime. And uh, Carla, maybe you could chat a little bit with us about some of the events that you guys hold. I know that you have a liberty forum uh, that I attended back in, I believe, 2008 or so when Ron Paul was running for president back then. Uh, Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the events that you guys hold and the conferences and speakers and wonderful kind of live things that you guys do up there. Sure, yeah. We host two annual events. We have the Porcupine Freedom Festival, which takes place in summertime. And then we have uh, the New Hampshire Liberty Forum, which is our winter conference, which will be coming up in March, uh, March 5th through the 8th, 2014. Uh, t- oh, sorry, <laughs> let me say that all over again. <laughs> um, we host two events. We have the Porcupine Freedom Festival, which is our summer event, and that will take place in June 2015. And then we have our upcoming Liberty Forum, which takes place March 5th through the 8th, and that will be in downtown Manchester. 
So the idea with Liberty Forum is to kind of showcase both the community that we're building here. People can come out and get a sense of who we are. And then, as you mentioned, you know, we have fantastic speakers. It is an educational event. Uh, you know, we'll have uh, people from the Bitcoin community. We'll have, you know, professors. We'll have some people from think tanks. And um, it's generally, you know, up to 500 people come and um, just spend a weekend in New Hampshire discovering more about Free State Project participants and more about the subjects of liberty. Great, yeah, and and I love learning about liberty. I actually just went to the uh, New York uh, City Liberty Fest just a uh, couple of days ago, and uh, there's just such a, a warmth of the presentations that kind of speak very uh, highly of liberty. And it, I know that the Porcupine Festival that you guys have is a um, kind of week-long event uh, where there's not only speakers, but there's uh, just so much community that gets formed, this uh, kind of spontaneous order that pops up in the societies that are, are just built in these kind of tents all around the, uh, the campground up there. So Pork Fest, you know, is, is a very unique experience. You know, we've had up to 2,000 people come up now. It's sort of uh, it's not as wild or as, uh, you know, artsy as Burning Man, but it's kind of the Burning Man for libertarians, and that's up in Lancaster. And it's always, it's as you said, you know, it's, it's a combination of, you know, learning, but it also is just having fun, bonfires, grilling, meeting new people, making friends, um, all of that good stuff. And it's a week long. By the end of it, you know, we're all invigorated and exhausted. <laughs> And um yeah it's it's a great event. Great, great. So what are what are kind of your um plans for the future? Where do you see the organization moving? I know that you've been in existence for the past uh, 10 years. And so, you know, hopefully another 10 years goes goes by and we'll have more liberty in our lifetime. What are kind of your direct plans for the near future and more long-term goals as well? Sure. So, um we're hoping to trigger the move in the next couple of years, which basically would mean, you know, at the clip we were going at maybe two years ago when I became president, it looked like we would have the triggering event in 2018. We've moved that up to 2016 and hoping to move that up a little bit more because the sooner we can get the 20,000 signers, the sooner more people can move. And, you know, we really do need more people on the ground. There's a lot of work to be done. It's exciting for people when they come here. You know, one, they're blown away by the community, but two, it's really fun to live your principles and to be able to, to you know, every day kind of wake up and be like, wow, you know, I'm really trying to do something here. I'm, I'm doing something exciting and new and amazing and uh, trying to achieve liberty in my lifetime. So um, the idea is to, to trigger the move as soon as possible, which, of course, means, you know, we need more marketing, we need more outreach, we need more radio shows like yours and, you know, podcasts. So really uh, the future is just getting the word out, through as many channels as possible, and then um, hopefully getting people to, to sign up and commit to this, you know. And it's so interesting to me because we've been around for a decade. You know, some people have passed away who've signed up, and, you know, your life changes. Maybe 10 years ago you were like, yeah, I want to go do that, and now you're like, no. Um, so people will ask, well, what happens if, you know, if I sign the pledge? And the pledge just basically says, you know, I'll, I'll, I intend to move to New Hampshire where I'll, I'll exert my fullest practical effort to the, you know, to, to the maintaining a government that really just protects an individual's rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So it's, like, very simple. But people will say, well, you know, my life has changed. I signed the pledge you know, what's going to happen? And I'm like, look, we're not the government. Like, we're not going to black bag rendition you to New Hampshire if your situation has changed. You know, you took the pledge, you meant it at the time you did. Um, you know, life goes on. Another thing we're seeing, which is kind of interesting, is people are moving here without actually even signing up. Now, that's bad for me from, like, a job description perspective because I want to make that 20,000 number go away. But it's um, but it's great on the ground because you know there are people coming in who believe in liberty who are just moving to be in a community of like-minded people. 
Yeah, and, and it seems like there is a large community. I know up in Keene, uh, there's a lot of people up there who are very involved in the Free State Project and otherwise just bringing liberty about. Um, that's one of the largest kind of broadcast uh, areas where there's a live broadcast and people are going on the air and chatting about all sorts of different libertarian issues. And I, I think that it's very exciting what's going on up there. And I, I really liked your analogy there, uh, Carla, between the differences of what you guys are espousing and what the government does. I mean, not only did you offer somebody a choice whether or not they want to be part of your organization, but you also do not attack them if they decide at some point in the future that they no longer want to be part of that organization. What a stark contrast from what we have as a, a, a state in our uh, society. Yes, exactly. You know, and in some ways, Obviously, the, the term choice has sort of been co-opted in terms of, you know, a debate between a mother's right to choose and, and, and pro-life people. And, but in many ways, I actually think the platform of, of liberty activists and, and libertarians should be, you know, it, it, it should be sort of the party of choice or the movement of choice because ultimately – that's how life should work, right? People should be able to say, I, I, I'd like to opt into this, but I'd like to opt out of that. It's actually quite archaic, and I think hopefully within my lifetime people will start to look at government sort of the way we look at burning witches now. You know, it's like, really? That's how the system works? That's crazy. Who would, who would want to have, you know, the, the, these overlords who, you know, make you give your money to them so that they can, you know, do evil things like wars. Um, it's it's barbaric. It's archaic, and it's it's silly. So hopefully we'll see that change, um, you know, and and sooner rather than later. And I, you know, I am an optimist. I I will admit, but I think even just you know looking at the past decade and how many more people are adopting these ideas and you know the words out there, the internet. Um, I feel like you really can't put the genie back in the bottle, so now it's just an issue of making sure more people get an opportunity to, to think about these things, and that's why I think a show like yours is great, and I'm really happy I got to come on. Great, great. Well, I'm very happy that you were able to uh, make it, Carla. And I, I think you're right about this kind of archaic idea that people don't have a choice. If you look back at some of the greatest advancements of humankind, it's been bringing choice to people in areas that they previously did not have choice. Uh, when we abolished slavery, that was bringing choice to the slaves that they no longer had to serve their masters. When, you know, women were allowed more to have a say in their relationships when, you know, they weren't uh, so abused by their husbands husbands that they were, they had to be there. They had no choice. They couldn't leave no matter how abusive that person was to them. You know, when we bring choice to people, when we allow them to have more choice, we consider that to be, you know, a great advancement in humankind. And we still have this organization that doesn't allow us one choice uh, at all, which is to, you know, renounce our uh, ability to have to pay it. And uh, I think it's just a, a, an interesting time that we're living in that we can call into question this idea of a state. So, Carla, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, do you have some uh, websites that you'd like to give out to uh, people? Yes, our website is uh, freestateproject.org. That's a great place to go and just find out more information about the Free State Project. Um, for our two events that we host, the Porcupine Freedom Festival, the porcupine is our mascot. So, it's a peaceful creature, but you also don't want to mess with it, um, is the website is pork, uh, P-O-R-C, fest.com. That's porkfest.com for a porcupine. And then the um, Liberty Forum, which is coming up March 5th through the 8th, that site will be live on Monday. Um, it just currently reroutes, but um, that is nhlibertyforum.com. Great. Well, thank you so much. This is uh, Carla Garrick from the Free State Project, and my show is the Austrian Circle here at WHUS Stores at 91.7 FM. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope that you'll be able to tune in for another episode of the Austrian Circle next week. Have a great week. Take care.